Donald Trump is looking toward the general election now, where he will face off against Hillary Clinton, now the presumptive Democratic nominee for president. Uh, Donald's no longer self-funding his campaign as uh, pro-Trump super PACs reportedly purchased millions of dollars in cable ads in preparation for this fierce battle ahead. Joining me right now is Great America PAC co-chairman Ed good Rollins. Morning. Talk more about it. Ed, good to see you. Good morning. How are you this Thank morning? Thank you so much for joining My us. Pleasure. So what do you need to do? At, at this super PAC to ensure that you're, you know, raising uh, well, the, the money required. My, my, my super PAC is not going to spend a lot of money on ads. Uh, traditionally, that's what they do. They spend hundreds of millions of dollars on ads. I don't think ads are quite as effective as they used to be. So what I want to do is take the 11 states that matter. Right? When this, after, after yesterday, there's only 11 more states that are going to really matter, and that's the, those are the swing states, Ohio, Florida, Pennsylvania, Michigan, those type states, and try and go in and basically make sure whatever the Trump campaign has in place that I don't duplicate, but equally as important anything that I think is a shortfall I fix digital find your voters get your voters to the polls uh, a lot of a lot of ground operation the Trump campaign obviously has bought this election on the cheap they spent less money than any other candidate uh, it ran a brilliant campaign in the end of the day uh, with a massive victory yesterday and I think to a certain extent you now got to build a lot of pieces in place because the Obama ca campaign was a great campaign and she just built right on that so she's got a great structure and she finished strong yesterday, so it's going to be a very close, very tough knockdown race. It's interesting that you say that the ads don't matter. Well, you, you saw $140 million being spent by, by Jeb Bush, and it didn't do anything. Yeah. Uh, that's a super PAC. So I would, I would argue at this point in time that there's other elements to a campaign that you can do. A lot of the money people don't want to just you know, put 15, 20 million dollars into something that just basically is ads that aren't, aren't worthless. Well, are you concerned, though, that Hillary has had this kind of infrastructure in place throughout the entire primary campaign and with Trump just kind of building it up now? Well, I, I, sure, I'm always concerned about that. But at the end of the day here, he, what he has is he's the agent of change. And, and he right. basically, the place she can't go is she can't be viewed as a strong leader. And that's, that's what he has to project. I can make decisions. The country wants to change. I'm the change agent. You want four more years of Obama. You want four more years of the same kinds of policies, then you get her. Yeah. Ed, this is a really simple, maybe stupid question, but how do you get potential Trump voters out to actually vote in November? How do you do well, you that? Well, you've got to identify them. I and one of, the, one of the problems with his campaign, a lot of people turned out, a lot of big rallies, and, and people obviously turned out to, to support him. But what you have to do is like Obama did. You go find every single voter. You go dig them out. You, you go make sure they vote on election day. And when you're in a very close election, which probably this is a 2 or 3% election at the end of the day, you've got to make sure every one of your voters is identified. Someone knocks on their door. Someone offers them a ride to the polls. Someone calls them beforehand. You've got to do all those mechanical things. There's three elements to a campaign. You find your voters. You communicate with those voters. You basically get them to the polls on election day. And now election day is sometimes spread out. It's at more voters voted in California absentee than voted uh, yesterday. In the, in the primary. So you got to make sure those absentee ballot that they get the advertising, the mail, all that kind of stuff in advance. Well, and speaking of those voters, Hillary Clinton has made it very clear that she's going to play the gender card very heavily. We know that President Obama did very sure. well with young women voters. In the numbers, are you seeing the same level of enthusiasm for Hillary Clinton? No, I'm not. Uh, and in two elements that were very important to the Obama coalition, one was the young voters, which obviously many of them have supported Sanders, and the African American, which uh, he, he had record turnout. 13% of the of the voters were African American, 11% of the population is African American. So he had actually a two or three point boost. Uh, I'm not sure she has quite that intensity at this point in time. And certainly among young voters, that's the biggest effort she has today to go try and get the Sanders voters to come to her. And that's a long, hard battle. So how will how important will President Obama's endorsement, which is which is likely it's, it's, coming in the next I mean, week, more, more important than his endorsement? I mean, he's going to go out and campaign, uh, and most presidents don't campaign actively for their successor. They may have, may endorse them. My concern, if I was in her campaign, is he's a much better candidate than she is. So he's going to go out, and every day there's going to be a comparison. Uh, now, if he goes into the African-American community, turns that vote out, uh, it's helpful. If he's out every day being a star and the attention is on him as opposed to on her, uh, then I think to a certain extent that's, that's not a good thing. Wow. Equally as important, the, 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 the Trump campaign, and I don't run the Trump campaign, but I would hope that they would wrap her around Obama and take the bad policies, the economic policies, what have you, and say, listen, you want four more years of this? Here's your, here's well, your by the way, he's also accusing the Clinton family of using their position in Washington for their own political gain. Listen to this, Ed. I want to get your reaction. Hillary Clinton turned the State Department into a private hedge fund. The Russians, the Saudis, the Chinese all gave money to Bill and Hillary and got favorable treatment in return. It's a sad day in America when foreign governments with deep pockets have more influence in our own country than our great citizens. 
this is an important point that he just made. It's the, the investigators are circling around the foundation for this very reason, but will it resonate? Well, we'll see. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's up to him to drive that agenda. Uh, I, think it's, I think it's legitimate. I think there's been nothing but drama around the Clintons for 30 years, from, yeah. from the days when he was president and he was renting out the Lincoln bedroom or big donors got to fly on Air Force One. Uh, I think there's been nothing but controversy around them, and part of that's, you know, you, if you got into the Clinton Foundation, and Benghazi, those kinds of things are complicated. Emails is complicated. But basically, foreign countries giving money to the Clinton Foundation with she's Secretary of State with demands for certain things, mm -hmm. those are the issues I think that you can really peel the bark off of. If her. you're Trump, how far back do you go? Do you start, do you start I, talking about Whitewater? Do no, you start no, talking I, about the no, women? No, I, I, would, I would start with her right today. I'd, I'd, I'd take her apart on Syria. I'd take her apart on Benghazi. I'd take her apart on Libya. These are the things that she basically was a part of this administration, making those recommendations. Yeah, and ISIS uh, getting stronger. Lisa? Well, looking at the economy, there's been, I think Donald Trump is a very strong message to the disaffected right. in this country, particularly the middle class and blue collar workers. But are there enough of them? Are there enough blue collar workers to make up the difference with his numbers with Hispanics well, and women? Well, you, you, first of all, there, there are a lot of, lot of different voter groups, and I don't like to say, you know, 53% of the country is women, so therefore the women vote vote this way. My sense is he's going to get yeah, a lot. Of, good, uh, yeah, nice of you to avoid trying to protect the behavior of women. Could you be ruling the world if you could do that? that. <laughs> I, 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 I have a daughter, three three girl dogs, and a wonderful wife, so I don't, I don't have to predict any behavior except when I put a cookie out, the dogs come running. Uh, mm -hmm. But at the end of the day here, uh, you know, you've got to put different coalitions together. Again, it's 11 states. It's not 50 states. It's most of those states are going to vote as they always have. So it's Ohio. It's, so it's Florida. So you have to go in there, and, and, and it's always about 51 percent plus one. And I think each state has a little different, uh, different uh, targeting. Uh, my sense is there's a lot of women who care very much about jobs. They care about safety. They care about ISIS. They care about things like that. They care about their children. What Donald Trump has the advantage of is he's a decision maker. The president makes four or five, having served a couple of presidents in the White House, a decision, the president makes a decision every day that is tough to, to make. She obviously has struggled with decisions, as did her husband. So I think what he argues is, I can fix this economy, I understand this, I've lived in this world, I know how to make the tough economic decisions, and we need to move this economy forward. So will that go into his VP pick, though? I mean, if Ohio is so important, as is one of those critical swing states, do you, does he want to have John Kasich? Uh, you know, John Kasich would be a superb candidate, and, and, and at a minimum, you need John Kasich to basically run his state and try and make it a winning state, both for him and for the Senate race, which is very tough uh, with uh, Senator Portman, who's up, up in a very tough re-election uh, against the former governor, Senator. So there's a lot, a lot at play here. But those two states, we can't win. We can't get to 270 without Florida, without Ohio. Uh, they can win without those two. We have to win those two. So that's target number one. Then the other states, how do you get another six or seven states that make the difference? All that's, right. We will leave it there. Ed, always great analysis my, from you. My, we so appreciate pleasure. your time this morning. Thank you very much. Ed Rollins. Coming up.